With the price of crude falling off a cliff here, the entire oil complex is being obliterated. But not all of these stocks deserve to get slammed. In particular, I'm thinking of the pipeline companies that make the vast majority of their money from volume-based fees that have nothing to do with the price of oil. If anything, with domestic production surging, these companies should be benefiting from higher volumes. Yet when you look at the stock of a major pipeline player like Magellan Midstream Partners, one you know I've liked, MMP, it's getting hammered here. Down nearly 9 bucks from its high, off $2.62 in today's session alone. How does that make sense when roughly 85% of Magellan's business is fee-based and dependent only on volume, not the price of the commodity? Let me explain why this stock doesn't deserve the beating it's currently taking. Magellan has 9,500 miles of refined product pipeline where the company transports things like gasoline, diesel, along with 54 terminals, 42 million barrels worth of storage space. Same time, the company has 1,100 miles of crude oil pipe, and they're investing heavily in oil-related projects to transport black gold from places where it's abundant, like the Permian Basin in Texas, to where the refineries, where it's needed. Meanwhile, Magellan protects you with a distribution that currently yields 3.25%. Company has raised its payout for the last 49 consecutive quarters. In other words, if the stock keeps getting pounded, eventually its yields should create a cushion or even a floor, although we haven't seen the floor yet. Let's check in with Michael Mears. He's the chairman and CEO of Magellan Midstream Partners, one of the best performing stocks in the group. Hear more about how his company's doing and where it's headed. Mr. Mears, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, Jim. Thanks for having me. All right, Michael, let me ask you, because you probably have a hand, handle better than almost anyone in the country about how much crude we have. Are, is there just a huge glut developing in this country? There is a significant glut uh, occurring in this country right now. It's, it's, it's across multiple basins. It's in Texas. It's in Colorado. It's in North Dakota. Uh, producers are just really uh, ramping up their drilling. It creates opportunities for infra infrastructure companies such as us uh, to, to get the routes from the production fields to the refineries, and we're capitalizing on that. Well, one of the things I see you're doing, you already have a Permian pipe. You're putting another Permian pipe. Are there going to be like 3 million barrels of oil a day coming from the Permian? Well, you know, those projections change almost every week. How can uh, that be? Well, I How think... How can something so big like that change? Well, I think that the technology improves. Right. The, uh, uh, and that's one of the primary drivers there. The, the producers are improving the technology right. every day. Uh, they're expanding their production in that field, and, and uh, the efficiency of the production is growing. And those production forecasts, uh, we haven't seen an end to that. And it's, right. it's, it's rather shocking to us. Uh, you know, just a few years ago, we thought once we completed the two pipelines we've got in place, that that would be enough. We're not so sure now. You know, we may need more pipeline infrastructure out of the Permian. Is it possible that if we can't export, our domestic oil might drop to, say, $60, $70 a barrel? Well, I think that might be a little extreme. Okay. I mean, certainly uh, there is a point where there's going to be an impact on price, an impact on production if we don't allow exports. Right. Uh, you, you know, the light production in this country is reaching record levels. It's reaching the point, or it's soon going to reach the point where the refineries, domestic refineries, can't process it all. And so at that point, that's really going to be the critical point. It's probably not for another year or two, but that's really where the rubber is going to hit the road, and we're going to find out where that price will settle. I think 60 to 70 is probably a little too low. I think there's things that can be done uh, to optimize the use of that of that um, of the light crude. Okay. I think there's condensate splitters that can be built, such as we're doing. Right, and that's what you're doing. And can you it, please explain what to, what that does, because we've talked about a bunch of times on the show about how important the splitters can right. be. Right, a condensate splitter. Right now, uh, under current U.S. law, you cannot export unprocessed crude. Right. Uh, so a condensate splitter takes the condensate and splits it into, into various mm -hmm. products. The biggest products that come off of a condensate splitter are diesel, jet fuel, finished diesel and jet mm -hmm. fuel, and naphthas, which are uh, precursors for gasoline. Right. So once you've done that, you can export those products, you can keep them domestically. And one of the benefits of doing that domestically is you can optimize where you take those finished products. You don't have to put everything on a ship, take it overseas. You can process it here, ship overseas what needs to go overseas, and keep here what needs to stay here. And you've got the storage to be able to do everything, right? We do have that. Uh, at Corpus Christi, we've got a large facility. We have the capability to build about 3 million barrels more storage at Corpus Christi. We're looking at a number of new potential marine facilities uh, to prepare ourselves for this potential export capability. We're looking all up and down the Gulf Coast for, for the best place to put this. And so uh, uh, it's something that we're, we're actively developing. Do you think that there is a uh, move by some of the OPEC nations to get the price of oil lower so that we're not able to develop what we can develop? They ruin the pricing umbrella? Well, I think that's certainly a theory. I mean, I right. think that's what the first step they've taken, uh, yeah. you know, maybe to indicate that, that that's the path they're going to take. Uh, I think it's interesting to see how far they'd go. I mean, if we got down to the kind of numbers you talked about, uh, you know, $70 crude, whether they'd stay true to that or not, 
uh, I think is, is an open question. But I think that they're trying to, to perhaps set that, that uh, fear out there, perhaps, that they're willing to do that to affect production. But I don't think it's going to do anything in the short term. Okay. And how about the 15 percent that you have that is commodity related? Is, do you think that that's behind some of the decliners? It's just the whole group. I think it's the whole group. Right, that 15% is not hurting you, right? No, no, the 15%, actually, we're seeing on that particular 15%, it's a particular type of blending we do in our business. We're seeing margins that we've never seen before, record high margins there. So, no, that's not what's hurting uh, the industry right now, or the, or the uh, it, it's a group-wide issue. Yeah, and I, I mean, I know you're putting in Niobra. I mean, I think there's just a sense that everywhere we know that there's oil, there's a lot more oil than we thought. Um, I understand, from the way I look at it, the price of oil doesn't matter to you, right? It just really doesn't matter in the end. Well, generally speaking, that's true. I mean, at some point it matters to us, but, but you know, if you look at our business in total, the biggest portion of our business is refined products. And if right. the price comes down, one would expect refined product demand might go up. Our refined product demand's up 9% year over year, which is unusual uh, if you look at what's happened to historical product All demand. All right, well, that's what matters. Okay, but this is Michael Muir's chairman, president, CEO of Magellan Midstream Partners. It's all about the whole group. It's not about what's happening at Magellan, which is real good. Stick with Kramer.